Hi everyone, Alex from Beam is here, and today I would like to show you a demo of Laser Beam, which is an implementation of payment channels, an essential building block for having a fully functional Lightning network on top of the Beam blockchain. For those of you who are not familiar with this concept, the Lightning network is a second layer solution running on top of existing blockchains to allow fast transactions and thus resolve the scalability problems that currently prevent the use of most proof-of-work cryptocurrencies for micropayments. You see, whenever you create a transaction, you first need to wait for the block containing this transaction to be mined, and then probably for several additional confirmations in order to make sure the transaction was not rolled back during the blockchain reorg. In Bitcoin, where a block is created every 10 minutes on average, this can take up to an hour. And even in Beam, despite faster block times of one minute, it's still way too long for the use cases such as buying a cup of coffee in a restaurant or paying for a non-demand video streaming service. So how does the payment channels help us to resolve this issue? In order to understand that, let's look at a specific example. Let's say Bob runs a coffee shop and Alice is a loyal customer, which buys a cup of coffee every morning on her way to work. Of course, Alice does not want to wait for 10 minutes or longer in order to pay for her coffee. So this is why she would prefer to use laser beam payment channels for this purpose. So first, at the beginning of the month, Alice and Bob would create a funding transaction, which would lock a certain amount, let's say 30 beams, in case a cup of coffee costs one beam. And these transactions will be mined and will appear on the blockchain. Then every time Alice wants to pay for coffee, she will create an additional commitment transaction that will just indicate that the UTXO that was locked would be split in a different way every time. For example, on the first morning, she will pay one beam and hence the balance will be 29 for Alice and one for Bob. On the second morning, an additional cup of coffee will be bought and then the balance will be 28 versus two. And thus every time, she will buy a cup of coffee, an additional beam will be transferred from Alice to Bob using the commitment transactions that are not actually sent to the blockchain. They are only remain known in the wallets. Whenever, for example, Bob wants to refund Alice for something that went wrong with her coffee, he will pay her back and then the balance will be updated accordingly. At the end of the month, they will close this payment channel and settle their most updated balance on blockchain thus resolving this transaction and actually transferring the funds that are owned to Bob for the coffee that Alice purchased. Now, this idea sounds pretty simple. However, there are a lot of scenarios that need to be handled properly in order to make sure that this system functions in a completely trustless way and does not allow anyone to cheat or for any funds to be lost in the process. What happens, for example, if either Alice or Bob disappear and stop responding to messages? The other party should still be able to close the channel using the latest balance and get their money back. Or if somebody does try to cheat and send one of the previous commitment transactions and not the latest one, the other party should be able to detect that and punish the one who is trying to cheat by taking all their funds. In Mimble Wimble, it's achieved by actually revealing the blinding factor of all the previous commitment transactions whenever the new one is created. So if somebody tries to send one of the previous transactions to the blockchain, the other party will detect that and then be able to take back all the money that was in that transaction. So let's see how it works. Here we have two wallets for Alice and Bob. And first we need to create the funding transaction and we will start the wallet for Alice, which will wait for the incoming laser beam transaction and it will specify that it's about to lock one beam in the channel. As a result, we see that the new SBBS address was generated and it will be sent to Bob, who will in turn create the open transaction using this address and will also lock one beam from his side. As you can see, the transaction is created and now we will have to wait for this transaction to be mined on our masternet, which is our development network. And after that, we can start sending the commitment transactions to actually exchange funds between Alice and Bob. As you can see, the channel was created. Here's the channel ID, the amount locked from each side and the state, which is open. 
So let's see how Bob can use this channel to send LS 0.1 beam. First, he will have to use the transfer command and specify the channel ID. And since Alice Wallet is still listening, this transaction should go over pretty quickly. That's it. As you can see, the balance was updated and now Bob has 0.9 beam and Alice has 1.1, which is also confirmed on the Alice side. Let's do this again. Once again, we send 0.1 beam from Bob to Ellis and the balances are updated accordingly. As you can see, the transactions are pretty instantaneous. So obviously we can switch the listening sides and then send funds from Ellis to Bob, but I'm not going to show this in this demo. So now what is happening is that at some point, Ellis and Bob will decide to close the channel. And this can go over in several ways. The most correct way to close the channel is to just indicate in the next transaction that this is going to be the last transaction in the exchange and thus the channel will be closed mutually from both sides after that. There is no need to wait for any additional confirmations after that because this is a mutually agreed state of events. However, if one of the sides decides to close the channel prematurely or without the agreement from the other side, the other side should be able to detect that and take actions, which is why during our last hard fork on August 15th, we have added relative time logs, which allow to do exactly that. So in this demo, what we're going to do is to close the channel gracefully. So let's send an additional transaction. And in the end, we will specify a flag called graceful close to indicate that this transaction is last in the exchange. As you can see, the balance was updated again, but this time a fee was added for the closing transaction. And once it is mined, the UTXO that was locked at the very beginning will be split according to this balance, and then the channel will be closed. Now, at this point, I would like to say a few words about next steps in development of laser beam and about routing, with it, which is another essential building block of Lightning Network, which is very important. It would be impractical for LS to open a channel separately for each vendor she purchases from her coffee or whatever else. So it would be actually be great if she could only open one or two channels and then use them to pay to different vendors who also have some kind of route from them to this channel. In Lightning Network, it's called routing and it allows you to basically make instant payments to different vendors without being directly connected to all of them. It's rather complicated feature to implement and it has some nuances which uh, make it non-trivial, but we're going to tackle that next once we finish the implementation of the channels and we integrate it into all our wallets. We will also try to add this functionality to our nodes. Now, it's important to say that since Mimblewimble in general implies that the wallets are interactive and in Beam the wallet should be online for most operations. It also means that all the monitoring activity that requires things like watchtowers in Bitcoin, for example, to make sure that the network is monitored and that the wallet knows the exact state of all the channels at each time. This functionality is built into the Beam wallet directly and all you need to do is be online like a couple of times a day to make sure like all your activities are actually monitored and are handled correctly. So this concludes this demo and thank you very much. Keep supporting Beam and see you next time.